Brian Roberts used to steal 50 to 60 bases a year, play for the Baltimore Orioles with the Yankees for a little bit. And here's Mike Roberts, jump lead steal at first base, jump lead steal at second base. Watch how he bounces off and he knows he can go and he stops, but he still was so far off the base with that first initial jump. Now this looks like he's flipping a coin and going early, but this is really scientific and really systematic. And we're going we're gonna to dissect this. Now this is one of those things, I call it backyard baseball 2.0 because not all of your guys can do this. This is for guys that have really good feet. Um, I found that hockey players are the guys who also play baseball, are the guys who are best at this because they are the only athletes who are truly ambidextrous with their feet. They do so many skating drills. They go left, they go right, they go forwards, they go backwards. And you kind of need those things to be good at this. All right, pitchers. Here's what they do. Pitchers are a creature of habit. They get their sign, they look over their left shoulder to see what kind of lead you got. They come set, and by and large, they go one count leg lift, or one count pick to first base, or they get their sign, look at the runner, come set, and they'll go a four count. One, two, three, four, leg lift. Or one, two, three, four, pick. We can pick on that. The other thing is, very seldom do pitchers practice holding runners on first base. Even in our program, we'll do looks and picks at first base maybe once a week, twice a week. It's not an everyday thing. The thing they're most concerned about is making a quality pitch to home plate. Like, no scout is ever going to, like, you know, evaluate them and how good their pickoff move is. So we take advantage of that. All right, the first thing about controlled jump lead steals at first base is a shorter primary lead. A traditional steal lead at first base on a straight steal or a delay or something like that is going to be 12 feet. Here, we're 3 to 7 feet. And I'm going to explain to you why 3 to 7 feet is really, really important. When pitchers come set and they look at you this way or look at you that way, they can only see about 8 feet off the base. So what we want is we want them to look here and they see us with a short lead of three to eight feet. Then they look again, and still, we look non-threatening. Does a three-foot lead seem threatening to you? No. Does a seven-foot lead seem threatening to you? No, but 12 and more, that seems threatening. So we're rocking them to sleep a little bit. So here's primary lead. It's like a shuffle and a half out to three to seven feet. As a point of reference, you see that little yellow line, that little hash mark by Big Ben Carbo's right foot? That's 12 feet from the base right there as a frame of reference. And we'll talk more about why that 12 foot line is really, really important in this technique. All right, it's a controlled jump because we got our three to seven foot primary lead and we're not crossing over, turning our shoulders towards second base and taking off on a dead sprint. It's a controlled jump like this. I can stop and go back, I can stop and hold, or I can take off for second base if I see that he's going to the plate. That's why it's called a controlled jump, small shuffle. And it's gotta happen before leg lift, before pitcher movement. If we wait until that leg lifts, it's too late. We don't have a, we don't have a long enough lead, we're gonna get hosed. So here's what the controlled jump looks like. You're gonna notice they are off before leg lift. Boom, hit it pretty well there. That's perfect. If that timing doesn't fall into place, you don't go. And we'll talk more about that. When you jump out, when you jump out, look at his left foot right there. That left foot has to be inside that 12 foot hash mark. If when he jumps out, that left foot is outside 12 feet, if he does pick, you're too far out. You can't have a step and a dive back to first base. So that 12 foot hash mark, we call that our 12 foot safety zone. So when you jump out, you hit it just right, that's an important check mark right there. So you notice as they jump out, it's a controlled jump lead, his shoulders have to remain square to the third baseline. If those shoulders are turned towards second and they pick, we are screwed. All right. Once we read leg lift and we jump out, we turn that into a sprint towards second base and we're off.